What happens when the biggest tectonic plate on Earth begins moving faster than ever before, pushing relentlessly against its neighbors with unstoppable force? How long can the crust hold this strain before it snaps in a single moment of catastrophic release? And the most unsettling question, if Chile has already endured the strongest earthquake ever recorded in human history, could that nightmare repeat itself? These are not distant possibilities. They are immediate realities facing millions who live along the fiery edge of the Pacific Ring, where Earth's greatest plate, the Pacific Plate, is shifting at record speed. Along Chile's rugged coastline, the Nazca Plate grinds beneath South America under this massive push, creating one of the most volatile collision zones on the planet. Here, a locked segment is wedged tight, storing energy year after year, decade after decade. And history makes one truth clear. When locked segments finally break, they do so with devastating fury. Chile's coastline stretches for more than 2,600 miles, or over 4,000 kilometers, making it one of the longest coastlines on Earth. This vast expanse hugs the boundary where the Nazca Plate is forced beneath the South American Plate, a collision that has shaped the Andes Mountains, sculpted the deserts, and, most importantly, produced some of the most violent earthquakes in human memory. But Chile is not just another country along the Ring of Fire. It holds a grim distinction that no other nation can claim. In 1960, Chile experienced the most powerful earthquake ever recorded, the Valdivia earthquake, also called the Great Chilean Earthquake. With a magnitude of 9.5, this event did more than devastate towns and cities. It shifted the balance of the planet itself. The shaking lasted nearly 10 minutes, collapsing entire villages, unleashing landslides, and sending towering waves racing across the Pacific Ocean. To understand its power, consider this. The 1960 quake released more energy than 2,500 nuclear bombs detonating simultaneously. It killed thousands in Chile, but its reach extended far beyond South America. Hawaii saw waves more than 11 meters or 35 feet high. Japan, over 17,000 kilometers or 10,500 miles away, suffered more than 100 deaths from the tsunami. The quake's violence even altered Earth's rotation, shortening the length of a day by a fraction of a second. Chileans live with this history like a shadow. They know the Earth beneath them is never still and time and again the land has reminded them. In February 2010, the Maul earthquake struck at magnitude 8.8. .8. It tore apart highways, bridges and cities, and generated a deadly tsunami that swept across the Pacific. The event was so massive, it moved Chile's capital, Santiago, nearly 11 inches or 28 centimeters to the west, and shifted Earth's axis by about 3 inches or 8 centimeters. Then, in 2014, northern Chile was rocked again by the Iquik earthquake, measuring magnitude 8.2. Tens of thousands evacuated the coast, sirens blared, and tsunamis were recorded. Yet, geologists noted something unsettling. Not all of the locked segments slipped. Some areas broke free, but others held firm, meaning enormous strain remains trapped along the fault line. This is why Chile's seismic future feels so ominous. Each quake is devastating, yet not one of them has fully released the energy building beneath the surface. Locked segments do not release pressure gradually, they hold on silently until the moment of failure. And when failure comes, the result can rival the largest disasters in human history. The year 2025 has already shown that Chile's crust is restless. On January 3rd, a magnitude 6.1 quake rattled Calamar, deep beneath the Atacama Desert. In March, another struck south of the same region, this time a magnitude 6.0. In May, a magnitude 5.7 erupted near Camina. June brought an even stronger quake, a magnitude 6.4 near Diego de Almagro, shaking the land with terrifying force. By September, yet another quake, this time a magnitude 5.5 east of La Tirana, was recorded. Each tremor is like a whisper from the depths, reminding Chileans of the forces that lurk unseen. Yet none of these quakes, not even the magnitude 6.4, are powerful enough to be the final release. They are tremors on the edge of something far greater, cracks in a dam holding back an ocean of stress. So the haunting question remains. If the greatest quake in history already struck Chile, 
could the next one be just as powerful or even stronger? What makes this question so chilling is that Chile is not alone in waiting for disaster. Across the Pacific, Japan lives with the looming threat of the Nankai Trough, another locked subduction zone capable of producing quakes of magnitude 8 or 9. Historical records reveal that the Nankai Trough has unleashed massive earthquakes roughly every century, devastating coastal cities and sending tsunamis racing inland. Japanese scientists warn that the next rupture is overdue and could kill tens of thousands within minutes. Further north, the Aleutian Trench off Alaska holds its own grim potential. This was the site of the 1964 Good Friday earthquake, a magnitude 9.2 event that remains the second largest quake in human history. Entire villages were destroyed, anchorage was ripped apart, and tsunamis swept across the Pacific. Like Chile, large sections of the Aleutian Trench remain locked, holding back energy that when released will send shockwaves across the world. What connects these three regions, Chile, Japan and Alaska, is more than geography. They are case studies in the unstoppable force of subduction zones. These places are the engines of megathrust earthquakes, capable of tearing the crust apart and sending tsunamis racing across entire oceans. They remind us that no matter how advanced our technology, no matter how well we prepare, we are still small compared to the scale of Earth's forces. Back in Chile, the warnings are becoming harder to ignore. The locked segment beneath northern Chile has not produced a giant quake in more than a century. The last comparable event in that region was the Valparaiso earthquake of 1906, a magnitude 8.2 that shook central Chile. Since then, only parts of the fault have slipped, leaving other areas primed for rupture. Every passing year, the strain grows larger. And yet, locked segments are deceptive. They do not send clear warnings before they break. They can remain silent for decades, giving people a false sense of security before erupting with unimaginable force. This is what makes Chile's situation so dangerous. The silence is not safety. It is the stillness of a bowstring pulled to its limit, moments away from snapping. The pressure along Chile's locked segment is not just a matter of local concern. It is a global story a reminder that the Earth is constantly reshaping itself in ways that both sustain and threaten our existence. Every minor tremor that shakes the Atacama Desert or ripples through the coastal valleys is part of a much larger chain reaction. These smaller events are not the main show, but they serve as whispers of the tectonic forces gathering strength beneath the crust. When scientists analyze the seismic records, a pattern emerges. Chile has experienced a series of moderate quakes in the year 2025 alone, from a magnitude 6.4 southwest of Diego de Almagro in June, to a magnitude 6.1 north of Calama in January, followed by a magnitude 6 near the same region in March. Each of these quakes, though significant, is still minor compared to the colossal energy locked within the plate boundary itself. They are signals tremors along the edges of an immense geological machine that is still holding back its most devastating potential. Staying informed, prepared and aware is the best defence we have against what cannot be controlled. If this exploration of Chile's locked segment and its global implications has given you new insight into the restless earth beneath your feet, help us spread the word. Like, share and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to tap that hype icon so this video reaches a larger audience, because in the end, awareness is not just power, it is survival.